notice requirement of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act has been complied with and that adequate advance notice of this meeting was given at least 48 hours in advance. On April 8, 2019, Notice was mailed to the Philadelphia Inquirer, and on the April 25, 2019, notice was mailed to the Courier Post. Notice was also posted on the bulletin board located by the reception desk at the central office and all school building bulletin boards within the district. Roll call, please. At this time, when I call your name, please say present. Ms. Teresa Atwood. Ms. Catherine Blackshear, excused. Mr. Wasim Mohammed? Present. Mr. Nanam Day Nelson? Present. Ms. Carmen Otero? Present. Mr. Andrew Tolliver? Ms. Martha Wilson? I am now going to call the student rep roll call. When I say your name, please say present. Christine Kuchu Yonder? Maya Cohn? Mariana Lopez, Jasmine Barge, Nashia Montgomery, Present. Kahira Coleman, Present. Brianna Kalaf, Ashante Horsby, Hornsby, Wesley Taveras, Jasmine Bargo, or Burgo, excuse me, Angel Rosado, Thank you. At this time, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I will now turn the meeting over to Superintendent Katrina McCombs. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Thank you to everyone who has assembled here today for attending this meeting and for contributing to an open dialogue about the education of our children. As stated at previous meetings, we will reflect on the rules of decorum that govern this meeting before public comments. These guidelines exist for the entire meeting to ensure all attendees, our board members, my administrative team, parents, and members of the public feel safe and respected at our monthly meetings. Thank you for your professionalism and cooperation in advance. At this time, I'd like to ask the board members, student representatives, and staff to transition into the audience for the monthly superintendent's PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. At this time, we will begin with the superintendent's report. At the beginning of this meeting, the first thing we would like to do is to pause for a moment of silence. Over the past few weeks, we've lost several members of our, our uh, Camden City School District community. Ms. Watina Kennedy, who was an employee at Brim Medical Arts, and she was a district employee for 20 plus years. We also honor the life of Dr. Gregory Christopher, a retired Sharp guidance counselor who rendered 20 years of service to the district. And also, tragically, our student, Sincere Howard, a Woodrow Wilson High School junior whose life was cut off too short. At this time, please join me out of respect for a moment of silence for these wonderful individuals. Thank you. So since launching the strategic plan, um, for those of you who have been coming to the board meetings over the past nine months, um, you'll remember that in September, we launched our strategic plan. And each month, and this is for the benefit of those individuals who may not attend our board meetings every month, 
we provide updates on our four priority areas in the strategic plan. Those areas are accelerating student achievement, ensuring a great teacher is in every classroom, leveraging all available resources to ensure 21st century schools that are built for success, last and most importantly, putting students first. And so under our first priority of accelerating student achievement, which we know is so critical um, for the forward motion and progress of our district, we'd like to highlight some wonderful individuals, some wonderful high school students from uh, Woodrow Wilson High School. The Coriel Institute for Medical Research hosted their annual science fair, showcasing the very best of South Jersey's science programs. I'm going to call up at this time Ms. Janelle Williams, our senior lead educator of math and science for grades nine through 12. And Ms. Williams is gonna come up. She worked very diligently um, with curriculum. Yes, give her a round of applause. Thank you for all you do. And I'm going to allow Ms. Williams to um, introduce our students and also to share a little bit about their experience. We are so proud of our students in our schools and we want to highlight them. Ms. Williams. Good evening, everyone. The Coriel Science Fair is one of the most prestigious science fairs that takes place in South Jersey. Many would not expect our Camden City School District students to even participate. But not only did they participate and show up, but they showed up strong. And so I'm happy to report that the Camden City School District students came in second place with Woodrow Wilson High School. people participated in one of the most, um, what was it, the most rigorous and most uh, challenging, thank you, um, category. They actually participated in the category of team uh, projects. And so they're going to come up and tell you what it was that their team project was on, why they chose it, and how it felt to win and represent represent the Camden City School District. So give them a round of applause. Hi, my name is Ayana King. I'm here with my partners, Malachi Townsend and Orlando Chochi, and we are from Woodrow Wilson Soar Academy. The project that we entered into the Cornell Institute Science Fair was titled Distracted Driving. We use statistics to provide, I mean, prove that detecting while driving is dangerous in hopes that we will make our fellow students think twice before they text and drive. When we call our names as runner-ups for the team project, I was so excited. I really never expected to be in top three. There were so many good projects in there. It was just so awesome that we could bring a win back to SOAR. We do have certificates for them and um, their teacher. They are in the back and we're going to give it to them at some point. But I just want to go ahead and just have our superintendent announce their names um, so, so you know who they are. And I also want to mention that Brim Medical Arts, I don't know if they're represented here, but Brim Medical Arts came in third place in that same very rigorous category. So. I'm telling you, I'm extremely excited for Camden City School District, but I just want to go ahead and announce who's sitting, standing here right now and the teacher with superintendent. Oh, she said I'm going to do it. Okay. So I just want to say thank you, Zelana King. How do I say it? Say it. 
Zayana, I better say it right, Zayana King. I'm not gonna mess up Malachi, guys, okay. Malachi Townsend. Orlando Troche. This is our wonderful teacher. Let's give it up for our teacher. This is Miss Callie Anassis. I wanna celebrate our teachers from Woodrow Wilson High School. We love you and thank you for all you do for our students. Oh, and Miss Hall, thank you Miss Hall, who's also the LE at Woodrow Wilson for her showing up as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you to Janelle and the leadership team at Woodrow Wilson High School and for all of our parents who support our students each and every day to ensure that they uh, rise to levels of excellence and they defy the odds of anyone who doesn't believe that uh, they can achieve. So we are so excited for them leading the way. Also, in alignment with our first uh, priority of accelerating student achievement, as you heard at the last few board meetings, we are in the midst of an iReady engagement campaign for students in grades K through eight. The objective is for students to complete a math and or reading card by meeting 45 minutes of online instruction and by earning a 70% or greater pass rate. The reward for students who have met the criteria is to be recognized at the monthly board meetings. We are excited to announce the results of the Learning First campaign for April. And we're so excited to see so many of our young people and their family members here to cheer them on to academic success. Even with New Jersey SLA testing in progress, our students and teachers are still dedicated to meeting the criteria with their iReady online instruction. There are 832 students who met these targets across our district. 832 students. That is outstanding. That's one, and one fourth of those students met the criteria in both reading and in math. So at this time, I'd like to invite our school support team up to provide the students attending the board meeting with their certificate. You may come up at this time. Okay, good evening, everybody. So this evening, we're gonna do things a little different. The students that are going to be recognized from iReady are mostly sitting in this area. So once we call your name, if you come up, you get your certificate and walk in that direction so you can have your picture taken. Again, we really want to thank the students, the teachers, the parents for just always supporting us, supporting your children. We have done a great job with this learning campaign and we are very excited by the results. Today, Davis has come out in full force. We have so many of their students here and I'm just excited and happy for them. So I'm gonna start calling students' names. If you come up and get your certificate from Ms. McCrina, move over to Ms. Wilson, and you will have your picture taken in this area. All right, so let's start with Alan Din. Isabella Rodriguez. Jewel Lydell. Antonio Rodriguez. Melissa Garcia. Kevin Arnaldo Garcia. Jocelyn Garcia. Kevin Garcia. Malik Fisher. Giordashali Ramirez. Yeah. 
Okay, now was our last student for today. Please give them all another round of applause. And the other students, we know that wasn't the full amount of the 832, but the other students, of course, will receive their recognitions and their certificates back in their school buildings. So moving right along to our next area under the topic of accelerating student achievement, I'd like to highlight our upcoming career fair. Accelerating student achievement also means preparing our students for college and careers. And exposure to options has been a large focus for us this year in the district. We're hosting career awareness in May and invite all professions to participate by presenting about your career to students in a classroom or by bringing your work vehicle to one of our participating campuses in May for a couple of hours. Please go to our website to sign up to present and or bring your work vehicle to share with our amazing students at Camden City School District. For questions and support with registering, please contact Mr. Larry James or the District Solution Center for more information. The phone number that you can reach out to if you have more information or you want to be a part of our career day is 856-966. 2507. That's 856-966-2507. And we look forward to celebrating at our next board meeting and providing you with an update there. Moving on to our second priority, a great teacher in every classroom. Even as our district evolves, our need for great teachers continues, especially in hard to fill positions like math, science, special education, bilingual, and ESL. We are focusing our efforts to recruit regional at, to recruit at regional recruitment fairs, excuse me, and local fairs hosted by the district. So you will see us continuously uh, working and recruiting to fill high needs areas in our district. Along with the second priority as well, a great teacher in every classroom. We know that our paraprofessionals support great instruction in every classroom. We recently honored our paraprofessionals in the district on April 3rd, which was Paraprofessionals Day. Big shout out to all of our CCSD paraprofessionals throughout the district. You're awesome. Each and every one of them is awesome. You inspire, you challenge, and you empower our students each and every day. Thank you, and I will always um, be reminded of my mother who was a paraprofessional at Woodrow Wilson High School before she went to school at night as a single mom to become a teacher. And I know firsthand the value of a paraprofessional. So again, we highlight you in this public space. We know we did it already, but we wanna make sure we honor you here today. Moving on to our next highlight, under or our next update under priority three, safe schools built for 21st century success. In priority three, safe schools built for 21st century success, in honor of Earth Day, I wanted to share the current and future focus of the district's green team. Central and school staff are working together to bring the importance of sustainability to the community of Camden with a main priority on more schools becoming certified with sustainable Jersey for schools. As you may recall, we celebrated Brim Medical Arts High School this past fall when they received their sustainable schools for Jer sustainable Jersey for schools bronze certification. HB Wilson, Kramer, and Caddo are all working towards bronze certifications and brim for silver this year for the June 2019 application deadline. And we are so proud of them. So to that end, additional sustainability projects for the next year include creating an energy savings improvement plan, identifying teachers' lessons that embrace environmental sustainability and sharing the resources more broadly, aligning our STEAM fair with other sustainable initiatives in district and also across the city, 
and implementing healthy food options for our students in our district schools. By the end of the year, the district green team will finalize their annual report for sustainability, Jersey for schools, and create next steps for the 2019-20 academic school year. Along the same vein in priority three, connected to their sustainable Jersey schools application, Brim hosted a green fair in honor of Earth Day on April 17th at Whitman, in Whitman Park. Over 20 vendors were set up, including local news outlets. Brim students engaged directly with various sustainability partners and programs across the city, including Camden County, American Water, and Covanta. Additionally, toward our sustainability goals and in honor of Earth Day, the district has partnered with Subaru and TerraCycle to create a recycling program for hard to recycle waste by transforming various materials from trash to treasures into benches, tables, and forts like the ones that are highlighted here. Every school, including central office, will begin to recycle any snack wrappers like potato chip wrappers and candy wrappers from now until the end of May. Students will actually get the opportunity to enjoy the hard work and effort they put into recycling hard to, hard to recycle waste. We encourage all of you to bring wrappers without food or liquid to a school near you, including to our next board meeting that will be held in May. Um, and when, with your collective cooperation and participation, we will be able to create many treasures out of our recyclable materials. Priority three, again, safe schools built for 21st century success. I'd like to just provide a facilities update as we do each month. Additionally, for, additionally for priority three, we have several facilities updates. One, preparing for warmer weather. With warmer weather upon us, the district is working to ensure its HVAC systems are working properly. Facilities is executing related work orders generated by the schools while also working proactively with our vendors to perform preventative maintenance and other procedures to prepare schools for the warmer months to come. With regard to Dudley School, I just want to highlight some challenges that we have had. At Dudley, there was a cafeteria leak. We want to thank the Dudley team for their patience with a persistent leak located in their cafeteria. The facilities team is working to engage the contractor who installed the roof so they may make the necessary repairs. Since the Dudley School was built in 2009 by the SDA, the roof is still under warranty. The district is pursuing this remedy so the expense related to the repairs will not impact the district financially. With regard to spring recess projects, in addition to the proactive work related to warmer weather that we just talked about, the facilities team worked on several other projects over the spring recess. Some examples of these projects included completing open work orders across the district, fixing a leaky boiler at ECDC, installing a new water heater at HB Wilson, repairing asphalt outside of Forest Hill, cleaning coils on cooling towers at multiple locations, making security repairs at the old Dudley location, which is vacated, and many other similar projects. So I wanted to share more details with the, the community, with our entire community, our school community, most of you who are assembled here today. Um, as I look out into the audience, I, I cannot look into the audience without acknowledging uh, one of my prior mentors, Dr. Elsa V. Suarez, who, if it were not for her, um, I would probably not be standing here today, but I know that many of us are gathered today because of many of the concerns around the decisions that have been made um, with regard to building and school actions. So I wanted to share a few more details with you around the condition 
and the assessment of veterans. Just a year ago, the school district engaged an engineering firm, EMG, to conduct a district-wide facilities condition assessment of all buildings, all of our buildings in the district, which identifies emergent physical conditions present in each building. Using the condition assessment, the district prepared emergent project applications to the school's development authority with the assistance of our engineer of record, Remington and Vernick. High-level list of work related to veterans includes $14 million in emergent improvements, including, but not limited to, the following. Replacement of the entire roof, replacement of the boiler system, redesign and replacement of, HVAC, of the HVAC system, replacement of galvanized iron water supply line and main valve, which is um, highlighted in the picture above, repairs to electrical and lighting systems, repairs to structural failure points, including walls, windows, and doors, repairs to paved lots and retaining walls, related hazardous material abatement, lead and asbestos included, which would only be needed if repairs are needed to affected areas. In late January, in late January, we submitted this application along with $108 million of other projects, which was also on the January board resolution list. To be transparent, this application summary and pricing estimate are available also on our district website. So included in our update on priority three, safe schools built for 21st century success, today we wanted to provide you with a report on trends from the first three months of the year for harassment, intimidation, or bullying incidents. From September through December, 38 HIB investigations were conducted at eight district schools. Out of these 38 cases, only 26% of those were confirmed HIB incidents. The other incidents were deemed to be violations of the code of conduct and not a specific harassment or bullying situation. Compared to the same window of time last year, we are seeing less than half as many confirmed HIV incidents. For the 10 cases that were confirmed HIV, the categories included two based on gender and eight for other distinguishing characteristics. In the 10 confirmed cases during that time, we are seeing trends in the, the spread of rumors, cyberbullying, and text message threats. So in gathering that information, um, we need to make sure that we are doing something about it and being responsive. So for the cases that were found to be verified HIV incidents, remedial actions and consequences were taken for students that committed an act of harassment, intimidation, or bullying. All students received counseling sessions, peer mediation, with guidance counselors or on kindness, personal space, and restorative justice. In addition, students received a consequence ranging from positive behavioral interventions, loss of privileges, detention, class change, up to suspension, which is the, the last uh, resort. Separately, in an effort to reduce HIV incidents, district-wide, our anti-bullying coordinator meets with anti-bullying specialists at each school to discuss interventions and resources. In addition, all staff, contracted service providers, and volunteers are trained on the district HIV policy and procedures. And at least two hours of training on prevention occurred as well. On the district website, on the page for families, you can find various resources for anti-bullying as well as contact the district anti-bullying coordinator or school-based anti-bullying specialist 
or report acts that you have witnessed. Thank you to our staff and students as we all work together to reduce all incidents of harassment, intimidation, and bullying. To our final strategic plan priority, priority four, putting students first. So we are putting students first by implementing breakfast carts for easier access of school breakfast meals. Breakfast after the bell with grab and go meals are now available in the cafeteria or at a breakfast cart. We are now piloting breakfast fruit smoothies as a choice for breakfast in our high schools. These healthy choices are in line with our breakfast after the bell initiatives, hoping to encourage participation in our high schools. So sh just shifting gears a bit, but still in alignment with our uh, update, current update category of putting students first. I share the same goal as every parent in this city, a great education for our children. Since joining the Camden City School District as a teacher in 1991, I have been focused on doing whatever I can to contribute to improving our district schools. Our students will not have the opportunity to achieve great things if we fail to provide them and their teachers with resources for a world-class education. I know we have to keep the programs that are seeing results, like our reading interventionists, like our iReady programs, like our after-school programs, and our summer school program offerings. Putting students first means putting every dollar we can into improving academic achievement. When there is a building that is in need of so much investment that fixing it will take funds out of the classroom or as our buildings are under enrolled without change, my decision will always be to figure out a way to protect programs that our students need to learn and also to protect programs that have been proving to be effective in contributing to our steady incremental gains district-wide in our academic outcomes. I believe that we can close the achievement gap and I always have and I always will. We can close the achievement gap in Camden for students in our traditional public schools. But we can't do that without resources. If we don't ensure that we are putting our resources intentionally into those areas that we have seen progress in through evidence, we will perpetuate the opportunity gap for our students and it will drive us further from the high quality educational outcomes we want in our traditional public schools. So in working with our long-term need to maximize seats, to be able to invest in interventions and supports for our students, we will make, as you have already heard, but I will share it again because everyone may not have heard this information, we will make several changes for next year. We need to make the difficult decision to close the Veterans Building for the fall. I want to say thank you uh, very much for your display of passion. Um, these are our schools, and these are our schools for your display of passion. Okay. So without mutual respect, this meeting can't continue. So it is very important that this is a dialogue, and I do understand, I do understand. Okay. I won't talk over you. At this time, we'll have the acknowledgement of our retirees by Ms. Atwood. Good evening. We would like to thank all of the teachers, all of the paraprofessionals, all the custodians, and everyone else who gave their lives to the Camden City District. We appreciate that they came back here, those who grew up here, we appreciate that they came back and gave to the city for as many years as they did before retiring. All right, first on our list is 
Naomi Abeladejo. She was a clerk three, bilingual. She worked in a central office for 27 years. Next is Bruce Brown, social worker, Camden uh, Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy, 25 years. Rosa Cook, paraprofessional A, Dudley, 29 years. Barbara Hutchinson, teacher, health and PE, Wiggins, 29 years. Dennis Gerald, teacher, health and PE, ECDC, 17 years. Rhonda Kalnacki, teacher, elementary, Caddo, 19 years. Sandra Larmanis, teacher, elementary, Cooper's Point, 31 years. Bernadette Marino, teacher, elementary, Sharp, 39 years. And last but certainly not least, Jacqueline Thornton, teacher, creative writing, creative arts, Morgan Village Academy, 34 years. And we thank you so much, and we pray that uh, your next endeavor or your retirement, retirement will be enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Atwood. At this time, we're going to turn it over. Yes, thank you so much for acknowledging our retirees. At this time, we will turn our attention to our student board representatives. Uh, many of our student board reps are working this evening, but I did have the opportunity to meet with them after the spring break yesterday. Um, the representatives from each of our high schools to hear, as we do on a monthly basis, what their concerns are and what we can do to make sure that we are living up to our end of being accountable to providing them with the best, most thorough and efficient education that we possibly can. And so we are um, pleased to have our representatives from Big Picture Learning Academy and Camden High School who will share uh, their glows but also their grows as well. So you may begin, ladies. Hi, my name is Nashaya Montgomery from Camden High. Um, I'm a senior at Sam Camden High. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Nishaya. my name is Nashaya Montgomery. I'm a senior at Camden High. Um, some of the goals we have are our senior seminar class. We get a lot of support for colleges in testing. They, they make sure everything we do, we do it thoroughly. And no child, I mean, nobody is set up to fail. Everybody gets the help that they need to do what they need to do. But one role that we are working on is our gym because we don't have our gym like the floor is messed up but it's working on being fixed and i think that's it thank you thank you thank you to guys Hello everybody, my name is Kyra Coleman and I am a senior at Camden Big Picture Learning Academy. Um, things that are sort of going well right now, as the years go by we are improving. Um, and one growth area that we are working closely with the superintendent to improve is our pool. Um, we would like to get our pool up and running so that our students can take swimming classes and also that other students in our community will have access to our pool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you so much for sharing your grows and your glows. We want to make sure that we give our student board reps the utmost respect and attention. Anything you have to direct toward me, that's one thing. But our student board reps deserve our undivided attention when they are speaking. So please, if you could listen, uh, because we want to all hear what they have to say. So with regard to what you shared um, at Camden High and Woodrow Wolf and at BPLA, which we talked about yesterday at our lunch, um, we are working diligently to see what we can do with regard to the pool at Big Picture Learning Academy. We know that it is a huge insurance expense that we don't have the monies for as a district, but we are looking at other grant opportunities to figure out ways that we could possibly use that space in order to ensure that our students are able to be equipped so that if they want to become lifeguards or if they want to, uh, just so that they're able to safely learn how to swim, that can happen. So that is still in progress. The gym floor that was mentioned at Camden High School, that is something that we are very much aware of. Uh, and we know that Hatch, 
The Hatch location is a temporary location, but in the meantime, we are trying to do everything we possibly can, and some of those uh, projects are on the list of our SDA applications as well, so uh, we are still continuing to work in those areas. Thank you, as always, ladies, for being very honest, for being very open, bold, strong, and courageous in sharing what your concerns are. At this time, I'd like to open up to our board members if they have any comments or if they have any, cons uh, any questions or remarks with regard to our student board reps. I would just okay. like to say thank you. You know, continue to share with us. Um, hearing from you first is most important, and we want to continue to collaborate to make the necessary improvements. So thank you. Thank you very much. If there are no other comments from board members at this time, um, we're going to uh, dismiss our board reps because we know they have to get ready for school tomorrow. And I will turn it over to our, uh, board, our business administrator as we get ready to transition into closed. The board will now go into closed session to discuss the following matters. Individual privacy, investigations, client privilege, excuse me, attorney-client privilege, and personnel matters. At this time, I call for a motion to go into closed session. Is there a second? A second. A motion was made to go into closed session by Ms. Carmen Otero. It was second by Mr. Wasim Mohammed. We will go into close. We can have your attention, please. We can answer the question. This is, she is reading, attempting to read the statement. So please, for the benefit of everyone who is here, allow our business administrator to continue to read this meeting must be conducted in an orderly fashion. So Ms. Uh, Coppin, please. The meeting must be conducted in an orderly fashion. Ms. Coppin. Please let them know the rest of your statement. A motion was made to go into closed session by Ms. Carmen Otero, and it was second by Mr. Wasim Mohammed. All board members who are in favor, all board members who are in favor, please say yes. Yes. All board members opposed, please say no. for 30 minutes. At this time, I call for a motion to come out of closed session. Second. Is there a second? Second. A motion to come out of closed session was made by Ms. Teresa Atwood and second by Ms. Martha Wilson. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I second that.